You're listening to the Bumbling Golfer Podcast. Be sure to check out our friends over at Acorn Hills at acornhillsco.com for some of the nicest polos, Q-zips, and casual wear you'll find. If you do buy something, use code BUMBLE15, that's BUMBLE15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is John, the Bumbling Golfer, episode number eight here uh, on the podcast. I got some big news. Uh, the Bumbling Golfer podcast is now part of the Golfer Gang Network. Uh, what it is is a network of uh, like-minded people, like-minded people like myself that you know like to talk about golf in some capacity. Um, but this is exciting. This is a big deal for me. Uh, this helps get the podcast out a little bit. Um, it should help also with um, maybe some introductions uh, to other people, to other um, maybe other markets, uh, places like that, things like that, which is pretty exciting for me. So um, this podcast is actually pretty, pretty new. Um, this is the eighth episode, but I just wanted to kind of share that information with with everyone who's listening. And uh, if you're listening, I really appreciate that. It, it means a lot. Um I actually really enjoy doing this. I have another podcast as well. I'm not going to mention that, but if you want to go find it, it's called The Bumbling Yeti. Um, but I really do enjoy talking with people, trying to really understand how uh, golf has affected their life. One of the biggest things that I'm going to talk about on this channel and on this podcast is affordability in golf. And it's super important to me because, you know, I'm just a regular dude you know, who likes to play golf. And, you know, I don't have a country club membership. I do belong to the best indoor facility in the country. Um, but again, for the cost of that is a fraction of what it is to join a, a club that closes during the winter. And you have food minimums. You have, like, all those other things. Um, and, and you know, shout out to, to Justin and the Scramble House and you and your team. You actually do something that many places don't do. And that's develop players and help players get better and help people enjoy the game more. So uh, more to come there as well. Um, but yeah, we have a, we have quite a few, I, it's the list of the list is growing every day of the podcasts that are joining the network, which is really cool. So the only real, the only change is for me, right? It's just, I upload my podcast in a different way. Um, those of you who are listening, um, and you want to see the podcast, it's just me talking at a screen. There's probably some graphics up or whatever, but, um, you can find that on YouTube still. Um, but again, for the most part, you can find the, um, the podcast on any platform that you're, you're currently, uh, using and, and listening to it on. So anyway, that's some big, big news. Uh, already have some, some, uh, I guess guest spots. Uh, not only for myself, but also for for some of these uh, these guys and or I guess these people that are out there really trying to you know get a get some I guess get get some knowledge out there. Uh, again, this is not a podcast. It's gonna I'm not gonna really talk about professional golf. It's not. I mean, I'm I'm interested in it, but I'm not really interested. I'm I'm in it, you know, to for like the everyday guy, everyday golfer. I should say, not guy, but everyday golfer. So that's the big news. Uh, you know, hopefully it works out and, um, I think it will. It's a great group of people and, um, it's kind of grassroots, you know, we're starting and it's going to get bigger and bigger. And I know I'm going to get some, some guests on here that are going to be interesting, really trying to understand their story, right? Understand their story, what they like about golf, um, for themselves, what they like about golf, you know, maybe they play with their, you know, they have a family that plays golf or maybe it's their escape. Like it is for me. So, uh, again, really good stuff. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to talking with a bunch of people and, and also getting, you know, kind of my perspective out there a little bit more. The other side of that is this. So my last episode, I talked about the Philadelphia Golf Show, which was a blast. It was a great time. Talked to thousands of people. And that's no exaggeration. It's, it literally was thousands of people. 
Um, got to run it back with Justin at the Scramble House. We went up to Edison, New Jersey, which is about an hour and a half away from from where we're located, and got to spend two days up there. I really want to shout out the crew, everyone associated with North Coast Golf Shows, um, and the Philadelphia Golf and Travel Show, the New Jersey Golf and Travel Show, the Cleveland Golf and Travel Show, the Pittsburgh Golf and Travel Show. They're all the same people. And I'll tell you, they are a fantastic group of people. Um, I believe most, if not all, are from the Cleveland-ish area. So they're in Ohio. Really nice people. Um, big shout out to, again, the guys at 517 Golf up there in Michigan. Just super solid guys. Um, doing some really interesting things. Uh, they have an outing coming up in August, which there may or may not be news from the Bumbling Golfer uh going there potentially playing or just doing some uh video shooting and all that other kind of stuff but um super early to talk about that again it's only february early february um met some great people uh shout out to red rooster golf company i don't know if it's golf company but i'll put the link in a, a link in the description below uh great people they make golf gloves very affordable golf clubs by the way and super high quality now Keep in mind, I don't use golf gloves when I play. The only time I use golf gloves when I play is when it's raining. So I will be getting a pair of their rain gloves or their wet weather gloves, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but quick short story around that. Uh, the reason I was so drawn to the Red Rooster Golf Company, let me let me look them up. But I'll tell you the story. The one, the biggest reason why I looked up, went over to their booth is because the way that they said or the way that their sticker said Red Rooster. Now, quick story for me. Uh, growing up, my mom had a um, Plymouth Reliant station wagon that was red, and my sister and I and all of our friends and everyone, it became known as the Red Rooster. So I got a sticker for my sister to put on her car, uh, actually her brand-new Jeep that she just got. Um, it's beautiful. I'm super jealous of it, but... Yeah, it's called Red Rooster Golf. You can find them on Instagram, at Red Rooster Golf. Really nice people. They were super accommodating. Uh, had a good conversation with them. Um, I'm going to keep the next one kind of to myself because I don't want to give it away. Uh, but there's going to be a... It's going to be a it's going to be a destination podcast and video shoot um, and round of golf. Uh, it's going to be coming up in the spring. Um I'd probably, I'd say probably when I say spring, probably April, late April, early May, something like that, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I am working on quite a few things. Um, but again, the, the people at the North coast golf show could not have been nicer. And if you're in the Edison, New Jersey area or within an hour drive of it, there is a go-kart track there. It's called supercharged. It is the biggest I don't know, they said the biggest or largest or longest multi-level go-kart track in the world. When I tell you, and again, I'm not, this is, this is all stemming from golf, from me going to the golf show. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about how we got there, which is a whole other story. Um, but it all worked out and, um, I have a new nickname at the scramble house. So, uh, if you're in the Edison or around the Edison, New Jersey area, it, it's this place called Supercharged. The go karts uh, go about fifty miles an hour, and there's multi levels. There's hairpin turns. There's a turbo button. So those of you who know Mario Kart, there is a literal turbo button on the steering wheel that you push, and it pins you to the back of your seat, or pins you back in the seat. Also, you may have gone to go kart tracks, but you have a full face visor helmet on full face like you see the f1 drivers driving in or the nascar drivers using and um and like a neck support i i was thinking the whole time like there's no way i'm going to need this thing let me tell you you need it you need it and those carts are fast and you're pulling i mean over exaggerating but it was it was tough hanging on i was white knuckled and by the end of that race I'll tell you I sat there and I didn't let go of the steering wheel because my heart was beating through my chest. It was unreal, but it was a lot of fun. The food was outstanding. Uh, the people there were super nice. Uh, I believe uh, if you go there, 
Uh, our waitress, I believe her name was Katie. Now, we had eight people with us, and she got everything spot on. She was really great, and I believe one of the partners came and talked to us because we, you know, we were, we're, we're customer service people, right? So, anyway, that's enough about that. And it was next to a Top Golf, and we preferred to go to the uh, go karts instead. It was that fun. So, um, yeah, headed up to Edison, New Jersey, for the New Jersey Golf and Travel Show. Um, again, a North Coast Golf Show um, promoted uh, show. Uh, it was a lot of the same stuff that there was in Philly. There were some different things. Um, but yeah, uh, Justin from the Scramble House took, uh, he and I left, uh, what was it, Friday morning? Yeah, I believe it was Friday morning. And we headed up. Now, we got the entire stage sim. Now, keep in mind, this is a 12 foot by 8 foot deep by 12 foot high 12 foot wide 12 feet wide and eight feet deep on a on an eight foot stage we had two uh we had two by fours we had two by sixes we had fabric to cover the the uh sim with we had uh the the GC quad, we had a computer tower, we had a computer monitor, we had a ladder, we had uh, a like a 65-inch TV, uh, we had a table, we had tools, we had a golf bag, and overnight bags. And we got all of that packed in and strapped to the top of Justin's Toyota 4Runner. Um. My new nickname is Johnny Osha, uh, according to Justin, because I was worried that we were going to lose part of the load. Now, that's just me and my over, over complicated mind, the way I think about things. But we got up there, uh, got it assembled. Uh, we only needed one thing. We actually forgot one of the boards. So I went over to um, Home Depot and uh, got that, came back and, and knocked it out, got it all set up. Uh, a lot of people came through. They thought we were selling a simula simulator, but we weren't. We were. Justin was just giving lessons, and uh, I was just there, kind of, to support his effort and 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 show that, you know, a golf coach or a swing coach doesn't necessarily have to be a stuffy person. Now, interestingly enough, and this is this is something that was hard for me to understand, um, and and. You know, I'm not I'm not speaking on Justin's behalf, but I, I'll I'll say some things that make sense to me now. And this is just my perspective. I feel like Justin has a chip on his shoulder. Now keep in mind, I keep saying that. I'll get better at this, guys, I promise. Um I feel like Justin has a chip on his shoulder for a number of reasons. First off, let me state this. The the week before we went up to New Jersey, Justin resigned from the PGA of America, PGA Teaching Pros of America, whatever whatever that whatever he was part of. And I asked him, and and it'll be on his podcast. I will definitely ask him why. Um and we'll get more of the story. But you know, golfers can be really stuffy, really stuffy. And it's not necessarily the older golfers. It's sometimes it's the newer golfers. There's, I feel like there's certain tiers of golfers, right? So you have like the, you know, the guys who go out and play or the people that go out and play two, three times a year. You have people that play more regularly. They might go out with their buddies. Um, and there's a lot of, a lot of different things that go on. So there was, I, I specifically remember this one older gentleman and his son coming. And I was, we'll just say his son was probably in his, 30s right and they were asking me what we were doing there and the um i said hey you know we're doing live lessons do you have anything you would like to work on justin is the best player development uh coach in the country uh and i do believe that i would challenge anyone i would challenge anyone to tell me that they are they are a, a the best player development. I don't care who it is. It could be a PGA. It could be a celebrity. It doesn't matter to me. 
Um, I would put Justin up against uh, anyone. Now, when I explained to this gentleman, I said, no, we're doing free, we're doing free lessons, right? So if you want to work on a wedge, you want to work on a, a, a specific iron, we can work on that. And, and by we, I really mean Justin, because I'm not a teacher. I'm not a coach. But Justin's my coach. I believe in what he's doing because he's helped me a ton. And I've seen him help hundreds of people at just at the scramble house alone. He, you know, he has, he's a, he's a coach between him and um, I think two or three other guys. He has over 500, 500, we'll just say students, right? Golfers that he's trying to get better. This gentleman looked at me and he goes, well, where's Justin? I said, he's right over there. Now, mind you, at this point, it was hot in there. Justin had a t-shirt on a scramble house t-shirt and he had his, his uh, scramble house hat on and it was backwards. And Justin wears joggers and Justin wears dunks, you know, Nike dunks. And uh, they're probably not tied most of the time. And I will challenge anyone. If golf is supposed to look a certain way, I would, Justin, isn't it right? If you would think of what your typical golfer is going to look like. Now, if you look at the YouTube guys out there, you understand most of them are wearing Nike shoes. Most of them are wearing dunks. Most of them are wearing joggers. Most of them are wearing a hoodie. Um, maybe not a t-shirt, but maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe a polo, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but there's a time and place for everything. But I saw some, um, how do how would I say it? I saw some people that didn't believe just because of the way that someone was dressed so i explained to this gentleman and his son when they said oh nope we're not into that that's not our style we don't we don't do that uh golf coaches don't dress like that i said okay sir i said if you if you want to work on something feel free to come back and he goes yep we're not going to be back and his son's like yeah this isn't this isn't golf this isn't the way that, that golf should be this is a problem and you know, you can't dress like that. I, I said, okay. I said, that's fine. I said, if you gentlemen want to come back and get better at golf, feel free to come back. So I watched them walk away and I saw them kind of stop and talk and look at, uh, look at the stage where Justin was working with people. And then next thing you know, uh, Justin helped three people in a matter of probably 15 minutes. Um, so about five minutes each, he explained kind of his method and said, Hey, I can help you as long as you have data, as long as you have numbers or you send me video, I can work with you. It, I can work with you from across the country. I can work with you from across the world. Oddly enough, these two gentlemen come back. And what do you know? The older gentleman gets on stage and he's talking with Justin. And he said, hey, I'm having a hard time, um, you know, hitting my wedge. You know, I, I'm, I'm losing distance. So Justin put him on this screen. Uh, again, there was no one around, nobody around. I was noticing this because the, the show had then, or that segment of Justin's presentation had then ended. He said, if anyone wants to stay, hang around, get better, come up and I'll help you out. This gentleman gained 20 plus yards with this same swing speed because Justin showed him how to hit a golf ball. And this guy would not leave at that point. He was a complete believer. Um, I saw him smiling. I saw him getting along with Justin. I saw him just thinking, like I saw the wheels turning. And his son then went up and said, I haven't seen my father hit a golf shot like that in years. And that to me was, um, that was really interesting for me to hear. So after that, I, I, I the gentleman was walking away. He, he and his son were walking away. And I said, hey, I said, did, did you gain anything out of that? Did you gain any value? And these two gentlemen looked at me and they said, you know what? You were right. He really is that good. And he's easy to talk to. And once you get past the, the stigma of someone who plays golf has to look a certain way or someone who teaches golf has to look a certain way. Um, he said, yeah, he said, I'm, I'm definitely going to be reaching out to him. And they walked away and I heard them talking, you know, I can't believe that that guy helped me like that. And I, I can't believe, um, but I've seen it firsthand. So again, golfers can be so stuffy, so stuffy. I know I've, I've had that when I've gone out on courses and, um, 
I've, you know, I've taken my camera out there to do some video and they're like, oh, what are you, a YouTuber? I'm like, no, I'm just trying to get better. I'm trying to film my stuff. Now, do I put it on YouTube? Absolutely. But I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not, it's not something I do. But I try to create something that is not only fun for me to go back and reflect on and look at and see how I can get better. You know, so there's some other people out there that enjoy it as well. So that is kind of like the summary of the golf show. I, I can't reiterate enough. The team at North Coast Golf Shows, unreal. They are the nicest people I may have ever run into as far as golf goes. Like, I, And I'm not even joking. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, they're very personable. Every single one of the workers, they, they're all happy. They're all doing their thing. The only thing I really missed out on at the New Jersey Golf Show, they had an empanada stand. And I should have got some because they looked delicious. And they had like, tw uh, maybe not 20, maybe 10 different um, empanadas. Uh, but their food court there was really good. Not going to lie. I had pizza. I had a cheeseburger. I had some French fries. So, uh, yeah, it's it's odd. It's interesting to me that we still are in a society on the golf course of all places on a golf course where people are going to look at someone and make assumptions that they have no idea what they're talking about. And in the meantime, they're talking with the number one playing develop player developer in the country. I mean, he literally, I've seen him do things with people, you know, with golfers, people that have never picked a club up in their life, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just make things happen. And this is not just about Justin. This is about everything. This is about, you know, everyone wanting to be something everyone knowing better maybe we just need to take a step back and listen for once you know i did a review on my my ram golf irons i got so much crap at a couple actually i got so much crap at the philly show and the show in new jersey because i i hit ram irons people are like oh they, they don't even have like where'd you get them you know ram that's an old brand i'm like okay what are you hitting oh i'm hitting sub 70s well these are the same exact thing dude and they're cheaper just saying. And there's a lot more innovation coming out from Ram. So, oh, well, you know, or you, you, you hit, um, you know, what, what kind of putter you hit? Well, I hit a Buzelli putter. Oh, I've never heard of that. That's fine. It works for me. And I'm okay with that. I have seen people with the best equipment be the worst golfers. I've seen people with the worst equipment, just be outstanding golfers. I I've, I've played with a guy, um, who I've known for years, um, I'd say we're friends now. I'm not going to say his name. Um, but if you see this guy go up and swing, I mean, he swings it like a baseball bat. His grip is terrible. His form is horrendous. And he will blow the doors off of virtually anyone I know. And that, to me, is the greatest thing about golf. Because you can go out and have a great time uh, if you have uh, you know good people in your group. And look, even if you don't have good people in your group, you know, shout out to Raycon. You guys really need to sponsor me. I'm not even kidding. It's not showing it. That's weird. Where's it at? It's not showing. There it is. Raycon. I use these things every day. I'm going to hit them up. But, you know, I'll, I'll put radio. I'll put radio. I'll put music in my ears and probably just one because you always have to listen for knuckleheads hitting balls at you or near you. But, yeah, so you just got a real interesting taste of what the Bumble League offer is about. I go from subject to subject. I talked about go-karts. I talked about driving up nine, you know, 95 with 2x4s and 2x6s and 2x8s on, on the roof. Um, and, hey, again, shout out to the Golfer Gang Network. Really going to be a lot of fun. Um, big things coming there. But I am working on some things. This is going to get really fun. I am stepping it up in 2024. My golf game outside of my driver currently is solid. I am fully expecting, and I'm, I'll go on right now. I'll go on record right now. I'm like a 13.7-ish, 13 point, I think it's 13 something. Um, I will be single digits by midseason, and I will be a seven something by the end of the 2024 season. I'm going to go out and ball out. I'm going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to play a lot of golf. And, um, you know, it took me a full year to get to where I am right now. I learned how to hit a golf ball. I learned how to control it way more than I have in the past. I still don't have a couple shots, that I, but I'll work on them. 
Um, but no gear changes. I may do something with a driver. I'm not sure. But uh, my four wood is so solid. My seven wood, super solid. My irons just completely dialed. Ram figured it out. Like, just so good. Um, let's see. My 50-degree wedge. Uh, shout out to Shane Worley for that. Uh, at Shane Plays Golf. Really good guy. Uh, that's a 50 degree Ben Hogan wedge that that was that is his um, that he refuses to let me uh, pay him for. Uh, and then I go to the 52 degree uh, Taylor Made. I think is it Taylor Made? I can't remember. Uh, no, that might be a Titleist. And then I go to my 56, which is my favorite club of all, a uh, Taylor Made. I think it's an MG3. Just really solid. And uh, looking forward to getting out and playing some golf. But this is episode eight of the Bumbling Golfer Podcast. This is John. I appreciate everything. This is going to get real fun. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of fun stuff. Um, yeah, more to come. But thank you, everyone, again, for listening. And uh, if you have any subjects, any topics you'd like me to talk about, uh, let me know. It's, it doesn't. I don't want to talk about professional golf. I don't want to talk about Tiger or the Waste Management Open. Like It's, it's talked about so much. There's so much out there for that. Let me know what your favorite courses are and why. If you want to come on here and talk about your favorite course that everyone hates, but you love it and why you do, hit me up for sure. So, uh, again, this is John Bumbling Golfer here. Uh, six inches of snow on the ground this morning. It was 60 degrees two days ago. Uh, it looks like it's going to get a little bit colder here this week, but I, I have the greatest indoor facility right in my backyard. So, um, have a great day, everyone. Stay safe. and. Um, I need some kind of tagline, some kind of cheesy tagline, like, hey, keep them in the fairway or, you know, whatever. Maybe it'll be something dumb, like, you know, be sure to spin them off the green. Um, so, yeah, thanks again, everyone. I appreciate each and every one of you. You've been listening to the Bumbling Golfer podcast. Check us out on our socials at the Bumbling Golfer. Also, find us on YouTube. And again, those of you who are looking for some really nice golf gear or casual wear, check out acornhillsco.com and use Bumble15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order.